Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry about the delay in putting out a new video, but um, we had to get a new camera and some new sound equipment, so the videos are going to be much better from now on. So basically what we're going to show you is how to make one of these castle windows, which you can make as an insert and put it into an existing window bay. Um, this is what it will look like. Um, this was all carved um, almost entirely out of a kitchen, with a kitchen knife, a, a small kitchen knife. We'll show you exactly how we do this. This is the window bay that's where it's going to be fitted into this window bay here. It'll get cemented into this window bay because this house here that we're working on is uh, going to be getting totally um, castle-fied, I suppose you could say. Currently it's a, it's a traditional modern, now it's getting castle-fied. Okay, so what we do is we first we need to make a frame. Uh, because we do this kind of thing a lot, we use these uh, these frames here. Basically, it's like three L shapes. We use these clips, and uh, we can make any size we need, uh, and then just clip it together with the clips. So we've measured the window um, where it needs to fit. Now we've got the clips on, and what we'll do. These are strong clips, but anyway, what we'll do is we will put this onto a flat surface and then we'll start to fill it with our concrete or cement. Actually, we're using HL5, which will let you will uh, tell you more about that. But anyway, here we go. We've got it now on the flat surface. And what we'll do is we will use our mixture that we've created and we'll start to fill this manually okay so what we'll do is we'll try and get it into the corners first just to make sure that there's no large pockets of air or anything like that we'll usually put into the corners first give it a little tamp down just try and get rid of any air pockets because it's the corners is when you generally might have a problem with a bit of air that's trapped in there so we will do it this way and it's uh, it's much better So we'll speed this up for you a little bit here. This window that we're creating, it's not going to have to take any kind of structural pressure. So we're not going to be adding any iron into this window. Um, if you do add iron bars in, into anything like, like uh, any structure, there's always a potential for concrete cancer, uh, which we want to avoid. But like I say, because this isn't needed to take structural pressure because it's going into an existing hole, it's going into an existing frame of the window bay, we are not going to be adding any kind of iron. Whereas if you feel safe for having iron in there, get some iron, put it in, it's easy to do. You just got to make sure it's a cross shape so it doesn't interfere with the design. But you'll see how we get on here. Okay, so another important thing to note is you'll see that this this mix that we're putting in here is quite wet. 
Um, you could put this in dryer. It, it would be a bit more difficult to put it in dryer, but you could take the time and do that. Um, to dry, you do put the mix into the project by tapping it down, putting little bits in, tapping it down, a bit more, tap it down. The stronger your window will be uh, in the long run. But like I said before, because this is not going to be a an item that takes structural pressure on top of it, we're putting in this in quite wet, just for ease of the video, just to show you how easy it is to do. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just get it generally flat. All it needs to, is to be generally flat on top. Um, and then the next day we will be able to scrape it a little bit flatter and then put some marks into it. But as it stands now, this is just fine for working tomorrow. Now, what's important to know is that we are using hydraulic lime and not cement, which means tomorrow this will not be like rock. This will still be soft which we'll show you in the next scene. Okay, here we are, the next day, 24 hours later, and we're just gonna take the excess off the top here, flatten it out a little bit. Um, now, as we explained before, because we're using hydraulic lime, this is still crumbly. It's not like cement, it's not going to, set very very fast because you don't want it to set fast you need time to be able to do the work that you need to do and not have this stuff set up too quickly if you get very pro proficient at this then you can use cement if you want we don't like cement very much we prefer hydraulic lime but if you did use cement and you were a fast worker you could literally create this whole window within a day but uh, we prefer to take our time and that way if we want we can do several projects at once doing a little bit on each during the day um, that's just the way we prefer it okay so what we'll do now is we'll take a board just an old board and we'll use that board to give the top a general scrape just to get a general flatness, it doesn't have to be perfect. This window is going to be made into a very um, rustic, hewn, castle type effect. So flatness is not really an issue. The flatness is only really so it's easier for us to score or mark the cement um, as we are deciding on the design that we're going to make. So we just give it a quick scrape and move on to the next stage. Okay, so what we'll do now is we will start to do the measurements for the design. We've already got a design in our head, which is an outer frame with an internal cross heavy medieval type cross in the middle. Um, we'll also be using a little cardboard template that we've made uh, just to make things easier. Um, we've speeded this up for you here but uh, you can see that we're just working out the outside frame um, where the cross sits inside. Once we've got our measurement, then we use something flat, something straight to mark the places where the frame will be. And this will be our guide. So we'll just do all the way around and then we'll use a template for the cross in the middle.
as you can probably hear there, it's uh, quite windy here where we are today. In fact, the weather's been quite, quite terrible. Okay, so here we go. We've got the template that we've made just out of a piece of cardboard. And we're just using that as a general guide of where we need to score the cement for making the cross. So we just need one template and mark each side and then fill in the gaps with some lines and we'll have our cross. Okay, so there we have it. We've got the basic design of our cross. And now what we will do is the parts that will need to be taken away with a knife or a trowel or whatever you're going to use, we'll just score them. We'll score those parts. And the reason why we do that is because it's easy to remember what part needs to be taken away. Now, it's definitely worth doing this because sometimes when you're carving in cement, concrete, whatever it is, Let's say somebody calls you, um, sometimes you can lose your concentration and if you continue to work, you will have a problem where you'll take some of the material away that you shouldn't have took away. So make some scores in the parts that you're going to be taking away and then it's easy to remember. Okay, so we've scored around the area that we need to take away and now we can use our knife or you could use a spoon anything like that to take away the material that need to, you need to take away as you can see this material is still soft it's kind of soft and powdery that's because we're using hydraulic lime instead of cement um, and it's important to use hydraulic lime and not hydrated lime we will explain this later in the video um, but basically we do that, we take away the material when it's still soft and this piece, when it's finished, this, this uh, window, when it's finished, it will be as hard as rock, it will be as hard as cement. Um, but because we're using hydraulic lime, it gives us plenty of time to work, do what we need to do without worrying about setting times. Um, because this hydraulic lime, it will take days and days to set.
Uh, sorry about the uh, strange rotation of the the camera here. We're still getting used to this new camera system, and uh, not sure what happened here. But don't worry, the uh, next scene will be filmed normally. Sorry about that.
GoPro stop recording. So as you can see there, we had an inch of rain there last night and um, it doesn't matter because hydraulic lime cement can set underwater so it's, it's not an issue. In fact, it even dates back to old Roman times. Um, they created hydraulic lime cement for the creation of piers and jetties and things like that to set underwater. In fact, not many people know that a lot of the structures that the Romans created were actually created out of cement, hydraulic lime cement. The, um, the Colosseum, a lot of the things on the Colosseum are actually cement. So what we're doing here is we're just reducing the frame on the outside to make the cross pop in the middle, to make it more prominent. Uh, we might reduce it even further, I'm not sure yet, um, make it pop even further, but at the moment we're just reducing the depth of the outer frame just a little bit just to see uh, what it looks like and then we'll decide if we're going to take it down further, which we probably will.
GoPro stop recording. Okay, I think that we'll probably do the rest tomorrow now. Uh, it's getting quite late, so we'll just do the rest tomorrow. Supposedly a good day tomorrow, so we'll carve a little bit more tomorrow. OK, 
Okay, so here we are the next day. We're just using our little template now. We've created a hole in the middle of the template, which will uh, be our guide for the indentation that's going to be in the inside of the cross. You'll see what we're talking about as we go along here, but we'll speed this up for you so you don't have to sit here watching, but you'll get the idea of what we're doing. Okay, so this part now what we need to do is we need to bevel the cross on the inside and the way we do that is by angling the kitchen knife to a sufficient angle to create the bevel of the interior cross. So we'll just show you this first slow and then we'll speed it up. But you can see it's very very easy to do just take your time it's easy to do a bevel so it's good to move from one side of the project to the other so that you can use your strongest arm to control the knife better rather than trying to reach over and do the other side so we'll speed this up now Okay, so this is really starting to take shape now. You can see that that bevel is much more obvious uh, as we took it down there on an angle. It just makes the whole cross look just much, much better. Um, we will um, usually leave a cross like this smooth, but if the client, for instance, wanted a cross that was more worn, with a more worn look, a more hewn, aged look we might make it rougher we'll actually show you how we make this rougher with a, uh, a method called picaretting but first what we'll do is we will reduce the overall depth of the outer frame and the reason why we're going to do that is so that the cross in the middle of the frame pops out more it becomes more three-dimensional um, it just makes it look makes it look good so we'll reduce the depth of this frame here and uh, once that's done we will show you how to do what what's called picaretting which is um, adding adding age adding wear to the cross itself like I said before you know it depends on what the client would like some clients like the cross to be smooth, others like it to be more worn, more aged. Um, I actually prefer the aged look because it looks more castle-like in my opinion. If it was a, if it was on a palace, 
I think that the smoother version would be better, but um, a cross would be, um, if it was on a castle, it would probably be more damaged. And sometimes a damaged, worn look gives you the aspect of, of age. So it's all a personal preference, I suppose. Okay, so uh, what we'll do now is we'll just uh, skip ahead um, to, I don't know, let's say, skip ahead 15 minutes and you will see um, the, the difference between how it looks now, the, the middle cross, and how it looks once we've reduced the depth of the outer frame. Okay, so there's the depth of the outer frame has been um, reduced. You can see that the cross is more prominent now. Uh, kind of pops out, which is great. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, make the, the outer frame a bit more rustic again. Um, kind of like it was before, um, before we reduced the depth. Um, so we'll use the kitchen knife again and uh, cut some features into the cement and basically add age. This is an easy process. Um, there's no particular way of doing it. You just make it as rough or as smooth as you like, depending on what feature, what kind of... Um, look that you want to go for. Now just a quick reminder guys, if you would subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it, it, it lets us know that you like these videos. Please put a like on the video. Um, we really do appreciate it. Um, we want to create lots and lots of content for you guys to watch. I've got many, many projects in the future to, to, to video for you guys. So please do us a favor. Let us know you're liking this stuff. And uh, we'll have loads of interesting things for you to watch in the future. Thanks. Okay, so uh, we'll just speed through all this for you, so you don't have to uh, watch this. But you can see how easy it is using the kitchen knife, just cutting into the material, uh, creating features in there. So uh, let's speed through all of this, and we'll show you how to pick it at the um, the cross in the middle.
Uh, as for the uh, the actual mix that we used uh, to, to create this this window, uh, we used three parts hydraulic line, which is HL5 or HNL5. Make sure it's hydraulic line, not hydrated lime. There's a difference. Okay, so three parts hydraulic lime. We used five parts of fine white sand. Um, we used one part of a swimming pool filter glass and we just added water as we needed it. Uh, we also added some water reducer as well. If you know how to use water reducer, you can use that. It's, it's, it's not essential, but uh, if you know how to use it, you can put water reducer in there as well. It gives a bit of extra strength and workability as well.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Опа. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll just leave it for probably about a week, depending on the weather. Um, if it's if the weather's warmer, um, we will uh, it will take less time. But we'll keep this damp each day for about a week, and uh, just by using a, a spray can to uh, a spray bottle to, to keep it damp, and then we will after a week we'll flip it over and carve some of the back um, to make the back look, look a bit better and uh, then we'll add some stain and then it will be ready to put it into the window bay so there you go folks I uh, hope that you liked the video and um, you know please don't forget to subscribe because we've got loads of videos uh, coming in the future uh, thanks for watching and uh, Take care. Bye.